right, ladies and gentlemen. Who are you calling a gentleman? <laughs> Welcome to 21 Soul here at the Rope It Up Room in East Philadelphia. I am Fabian Brown. I'm here with my man, Pots and Pans, Lewis Marks. Like that pots Is that me? Pots, pots and, and pans, pans, man. Yeah. My how man. How do you get a How do you get a nickname like that? My man, pots and pans. Got it. That's the way it goes. I thought that was my specific nickname, <laughs> pots and pans, because I do the dishes around here. That's for sure. Oh yeah. my goodness, I love it. Hey, feeling good? I'm feeling great. I love it. I love it because tonight's playlist, man, is again. You know, we do this variety of music programmings from from interviews to podcasts to radio shows to TV, TV, YouTube TV shows. Um, Call it TV. TV. Yeah. TV for the 21st century. It's television. But television. Mm-hmm. But I think the common thread that keeps this thing going is the roster of musicianship. And music that Rope It Up is putting out. So, For it. so my inbox is a just a a treat, a treat, a treasure, a treasure it's, chest it's of just constant. <laughs> yeah, they're out there making music, man. They're out there making music. And if you're fun. making an album right now, stop. Why? What do you mean? No, don't stop. Okay, they don't stop. All we right. we came in pretty hot with this one from Aaron Whippy. Who is becoming actually a, a, one of my, you know, I had these relationships with all these different guys on 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 the label, and uh, the first time I met Aaron, you know, was actually in New York City in a loud bar, very with, loud, with Mr. Andrew Neasley, <laughs> Neasley, the connector, and uh, but Aaron actually came through uh, Richard Bennett, right, friend of Richard Bennett's, where you know you're on the edge, you're in you're in a you're in a creative world. <laughs> That, that could that could just go off into space at any moment when you're in the Richard Bennett Aaron Whippy world. That's that's so true. And the time that we're hanging with Aaron, he knows everybody and everybody knows him. This guy is like the undercover guy that that's just in he's in it with 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 the thick of the thickest. He's either totally discreet about what he do, what he knows, <laughs> or he just said it and you didn't understand it. <laughs> I'm glad you one said of, that. One or the other. Because he's got, I asked him where he's from. He's like, London. I'm like, well, so he goes, Cockney part of London. Like, you know, he, when he came and did an interview here, he said, I'm going to try to talk slow. <laughs> yeah. and, and then the next time I saw Richard after that interview took place, he's like, well, did you understand him? Did you I'm understand like, a word he said? <laughs> <laughs> we understood him, Richard. We I'll tell understood. you what, we did a show in Brooklyn, yeah. 21 Soul Sessions. And Emmanuel Casablanca was playing, and lo and behold, on the keys, monster Aaron Whippy, monster. And I got to tell you, like, it felt like church. He's. Really I understood good. him then. He's really loud good. and clear. It's funny. This record doesn't really put him in the like. Let me show off my chops and my technical skills on what I can do. Mm-hmm. But the dude is so bad when you he, when you see him live. You know, this this record represents you know a lot of great compositions and mm-hmm. his approach to jazz. You know, from from his point of view, from his lens. Um, and then when you see him in a live element, it's just like I'm gonna put that to the side for the second, and I'm just gonna crush it. Right here. Well, he's, I mean, the compositions are far more complex on the album than the kind of blues that we saw him play. Right. right. But, I mean, this, this kind of feels like Frank Zappa plays Lincoln Center or the Blue Note or I mean, something. It, it feels, you know what I mean? Like Frank Zappa does jazz. Frank Zappa does jazz. You know? Well, you know, I think a part of that is, is because he's, he's not going by the traditional jazz form where... You know, I play the melody, and then you take a solo, and then you take a solo, and you take a solo, and then we play the melody, and then we're done. He doesn't right. approach his compositions that way, but still has the tenets of the improv- improvisational, uh, you know, features of what jazz right. is. So the lighting guy is pretty confused. Oh, 100%. Can't yeah. keep up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. about this release. Cousin from Another Planet, set for June 21st, uh, this year, 2019. Uh, stand by, man. You know, Rick, the, the, I gotta go ahead. Take it aside, like cousin from another planet, play off brother from another planet. Sure, but it's like he's creating this persona of cousin from another planet, like he's some sort of alien. That's just like I'm, I'm with you, but I'm just from another space. And that's evident in both the music, in the photography, in and everything about the album. I'm really excited about this release. <laughs>
sounds familiar? Jared Polly with his album on Capitol Street coming up. Uh, coming actually, when this airs, this will already be out. So you guys are yeah. okay. Yeah, it's coming out May thirty first this year. Um, Similarity here though, like when Jared was here, uh, played with Middle Blue. Yep. Mike Clark on drums. On assuming. You're not expecting that, like, heavy vibe, so to speak, but he really, really held it down, you know? He's a, a great human being. Again, a common thread with a lot of these cats where people first, music second, right? You know, he has a, 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 a non-presentational type of vibe about him. Real... He's just there. Layback, yeah. cool demeanor. Yeah. Nice guy. And I remember actually sitting on this sofa, and it was after that performance here uh, at the Ropa Dope Room, and we're just kicking. He's like, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tying up my album. I'm like, oh, that's that's cool, man. He's like, yeah, you know, it'd be great if uh, you, know, you, you guys can listen to that Ropa Dope. But like, yeah, man, you know, talk, talk to Lewis. He's... It's like yeah, there's some there's some Latin feel to it too, mm-hmm. so I'm I'm digging in and I'm like okay you know well where where does the Latin side come from and here I see that he studied with Arturo Sandoval. Wow. Yeah, man. There so you yeah. know that's it's a lot of uh, influences that goes into all these musicians and you know what they bring to the table when they're writing and composing and it's that's really really great to. You know get. what I feel like when looking at, at, at like the, the not just this this. The, today's show really highlights that, right? But I'm noticing that the structure and the boundaries are, are kind of—it's kind of like it's not even a thing anymore to cross a boundary with genre. Oh, okay. It's like everybody is taking chances and is out there risking and just making the kind of music that they think they can make if there aren't those kind of structures, you know, and. It's interesting, it's interesting to see the arc of music, like, you know, it's a long way, strangely enough, from the Sex Pistols to The Clash, not to bring punk rock into this at all. Well, <laughs> okay, to bring punk okay, rock Okay, you just did. Right? So it's like, no, we're going to go out there with this thing, we're going to break all the rules, and then after a while, it becomes more polished, and then eventually you get to Green Day, which is kind of a problem, but... <laughs> Why is Green Day a problem? Like, where are you? Where are you going with this? <laughs> all right, bring this one up and come back to it. All right, we'll come back to it. This will illustrate my point. Okay, I promise. Yeah. Four, four out of five of these tracks are, are from keyboardists, right? Yeah, that's okay. Probably was it intentional. A happy, happy accident. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I meant to do that. So, so help me out with the artist name and the title of this, Louis. Uh, Casimir Liberski and uh, Odessia, um, spelled in Greek letters. Greek letters, I believe. Yeah, not not the first reference to uh, the Odyssey here at Ropadope, referencing Russ Kaplan in one of our recent shows. Um, this illustrates what I'm saying. You know, one would ask yourself, what, it, what, what is this, you know? And there was a time where somebody would present their album in, uh, well, I'm, 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 I'm breaking boundaries and I'm, I'm jumping into other genres or I'm I'm doing some fusion and I'm trying to blend uh, things and it would kind of yeah, define it. It just seems so wide open for experimentation at this point. So here's somebody, what I'm hearing has, uh, you know, you got Aaron who who has the blues thing, right? Like, it, you know, that's probably how he came up and he plays 
regularly with his wife, Martha Redbone, and they have a particular style. And then he's venturing out with his own music. If Jared, who's like, I can play in, in, in this band or in that band, but the Latin thing is what I really dig, so I'm just going to go that way, you know? And here you have Casimir. Um, what, what country? Uh, uh, born in Brussels, right? Yep. So it's interesting because the structure in... I don't know if Belgium's the same as Denmark, but they have uh, sort of conservatories of music. Yeah. And the conservatories walk the line, I believe, between uh, classical music and jazz. Huh. And then when you go further east, you talk about uh, Dmitry Vasilyevich, who's yeah. on the label, right? So he's raised in uh, Serbia, I believe, and it's all class. You learn classical coming up, right? But then he loved jazz, so he had to kind of break away from it. But he Sleep keeps track. the elements of the things that he learned, right? Mm. So you're hearing all... You're kind of just... When these guys go into the studio now, because it's it's easier than ever to go into the studio, and everybody's independent, so you can go ahead and make the kind of music that you want, right. you're hearing their history. <laughs> yeah, they, Right? It's more... I get to understand the individual... When I was a kid, you were deciphering the music. You know, it was all rock and roll or whatever it was. But you're like, what did he, what did he mean by that? Who, who is this individual? Now you listen to the music and you're like, oh, this is an expression of what that individual is trying to do. Yep. But I feel like it's at very early stages in a way. Like, there's a certain imperfection mm. amidst the perfection, right? In all of the records that have been coming our way lately. Well, I and I think that imperfection is because they're just in new territory. Well, that's it. I mean, when, I, when I'm listening to this track, when I'm listening to the album, what sticks out is is those influences, like you're saying, right? You know, I, I hear some rock, I hear some electronic, I hear some, obviously, classical with this technique, I hear, obviously, jazz, um, but the way he approaches all of his influences and puts it down. You know, this is definitely a... I'll go out and say it, This is a musician's album. This is a heavy album. When you're listening to it, you're like... What time signature is that in? What key am I in? Why did he go from here to there? Um, right. It's it's very um, intricate. It's, it's intricate. And it's deep yeah. and it's very profound. And it it makes you every time you're taking a pass and taking another listen, you find something new every freaking time. Like oh, it reveals. Yeah, it's like a little a little gold nugget. On past thirty-seven, like I didn't hear that the first thirty-six times. Right, right, but, right. <laughs> but, I, but I but I hear right. it now. Um, this is great. This. The singles is set for release coming up on May 24th, so by the time this airs, you guys will will be able to grab that. And, so we're looking um, forward, though, to an album in the fall. Yeah, album's coming we'll up. Scroll through our hefty so uh, release the, schedule the here. The 20th of September, okay? Okay, so we're, 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 we're way ahead of this. So yeah. you will have time to thoroughly dissect this track yeah. before the album comes out. Well, and, and that's great. Everybody like I, get busy. <laughs> now, you, you got to un, unravel this, because I'm not exactly sure the connection and how... Casimir ended up coming to 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 Ropido, but it's, you know, it's always some kind of crazy story. Or sometimes it's like I don't I think I have one for you, and I, I will open my email at the risk of uh, having oh, love having this. emails come in and and cause noises that the uh, that the producer hates. <laughs> but uh, um, let's let's do, let's see do if that. I I'm can. turning it up. Do that. Like all right, let's see where it came in. Bring it back down now. What do you got? What do you got? Uh, straight up. So, um, Bunker Studios in Brooklyn. Okay. All right. John at the Bunker, who has recorded many Rope Dope records. And, you know, it's a studio in Brooklyn. All the cats will know it. Brian Donahoe will know it. They'll, they'll all know it. And, and uh, you know, here's an email from last year, actually. Uh, I want to want to introduce you to my friend Kaz. Just finished his record, and and I think it really fits. Uh, you know, I think it's a good fit for Rope Dope. So, you know, um, the relationship that brings it to, to to the table again. Yeah. So I, I've never met John, but you know, I, I we got to look it up. There's got to be at least a dozen 
Rope Dope Records that were recorded at that studio. And there it is. Well, yeah. so, so break it down for me. I, um, you, you got my curiosity going, right? So you, you have, you know, the wall. You have this wall. You, ha- you, ha- you have the roster of what is rope right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe someone from the outside, hey, man, you know, what's your A&R process? What, you know, um, you know wh- what do you do? You know, how many shows do you go to? And how are you finding these guys? And, right? Right. <laughs> so... Well, I live in a bubble, Fabian, and you well know it, but we'll say it for the public. I've, I've never really uh, gone out to a show and seen a band and said, oh, I want to sign. I don't, I, don't, I don't have to do that. Um, but I just open my email, and people email. But that part, part of that is simply our role is making connections. Right. right. So the, the stated objective of rope dope is to connect independent artists to each other so that they can form a community or, or, or be more connected, and they already are a community, and, and have more power collectively than they have independently, right? And, and if you look at any given artist, we were talking about this the other day, everybody's got their, you know, what we used to call a Rolodex, right? They've got, the, they've got their contact list, right? And then there are intersecting points in those contact lists. Yep. You know, Doobie Pal knows Spud C. Wright from the gospel circuit, but Spud C. Wright knows Layla Hathaway from this, you know, and, and that that's how the stuff all comes about. So we're just simply like in the middle of all these connections. And so when people then it's networking, I guess. Right. So then, you know, when somebody says you should talk to Ropado. Wow. One of my favorites was seeing Terrace Martin at, at Brick Arts Festival. And uh, there's a drummer, Damian, Damian Lockett, is that the guy's name? What is, you know, one of the cats, like a serious cat. And, you know, I walk up, I'm like, hey, Terrace. He's like, hey, what's up? And then Damian walks up and he goes, get his number. Like, <laughs> you two connect. Just, he's just like, it's like, right. It's like Clark Griswold plugging in the lights. <laughs> Boom, <laughs> let's go. You know, you should be on that. And that's, that's how it happens. So people contact me. I love yeah. it. Dig into this, guys. Now we're gonna take a little side trip. Uh-huh. <laughs> so insane, so insane, so insane, so insane. It's all the drain, all the drain, all the drain, all the drain. The Lord just gave me a sign. Go back and forth my courses. And everything will be fine. As you may or may not have any control. Feels like I'm about to lose my mind. Yo, I hope people are ready. I mean, to be honest, I wasn't ready. And then when I heard this album, I was like, oh damn. We are definitely not a jazz label anymore. <laughs> well, that's not true, man. We're, we're not jazz label still. Not jazz. Since the urgency, Bluke is the culmination of Blue Rum 13. From Bullfrog. <laughs> on rope 2002. And? And Luke Vibert. Luke Vibert. You know, I'm a hero now. My son has been telling me all about Luke Vibert for probably 10, 15 years. Get out. Since he was like 13 or 14 years old, he's like, listen to Luke Vibert, you know, listen to Luke Vibert, and he'd give me stuff, you know, and I did listen, you know. Um, great stuff. Father, son. We, 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 we enjoy some intersecting points, you know, but the fact that Blue Rum and Luke are working together. I, I want to find out how that happened. That's a, how the two of them connected. And I think I think it's in the podcast. I'm just not recalling it right now. Or maybe we didn't even get to that. But yeah, I, I'm not sure. Legend. I'm not sure the backstory. But when you sink your teeth into 20 cuts of just you know, like the 
thumping. It makes you feel good. It makes you want to dance. You listen to your lyrics. You're like, whoa, what are they talking? It's a, it's a whole, I get this whole feeling of like, okay, I'm, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. Um, I'm really excited for people to dig into this and hear what their vibe is. Blue Rum's already doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Luke's already been doing his thing. But the, the, ma- like I think people are gonna be shocked. Like what? You know, Luke's with this with this with this MC hip hop guy. Like what's it? I think. The I think your common collab- ground is the is the love of that early '90s hip hop. Right? And I and I think they said like we just we just kept doing it. Everybody else did other things, and we right. loved it so much that we just kept doing it. And that's what they that's what they came together on. You know? Yeah, man. This is a. I dig it. Again, fun fun for me. Strong hooks, strong beats. Uh, the matches is there. Check it out, guys. It's coming out. It's right here. It's it's May 24th. Uh, this made me go back to Bullfrog and rediscover that album. So when, when did that album come out? That's 2002. Early? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mark Robertson, uh, Kid Koala, Ninja Tune. Cats and a rope it back in the day. I think we're getting close to the end here, yeah, bro. This is this is our time, man. This is our time. Um, you know, we're listening to verses, visions of a lethargic sun, uh, set for release on June 14. Give it a couple seconds here. Imagine King Crenson, Jethro Tull, Yes, Josh Redman, and a touch of Jimi Hendrix ending in a modern twist of classical instrumental prog wrapped up in a renaissance mood to capture the memory of the soul. Did you write that? No, that's a run-on sentence. Yeah, I never write that. <laughs> I can't even remember what I was supposed to imagine from the beginning. But yeah, I get it. It's, it's complex. V- versus? Versus. Versus. V-S-U-S. Infinity Gritty. There's a whole pod of intersecting culture yeah, happening man. around Adam Ahuja. Um, just, just beautiful, you know? It's, it's stunning. That's set for release on June 14th, guys. Check out Infinity Gritty. Check out Versus. You know, Lewis, I just got to... Well, first... But I, no, I got to back up for a second. Go ahead. The title, Visions of a Lethargic Sun, just scares... I don't really... I, that that gives me a very distinct visual. What is it? The sun just goes out. No, it's just kind of. Is it is it coming? Like, like a lazy uh, it's day. It's lazy. Yeah, it's like a lazy you know, day. Where is that? You, you hear the vibe. It's like, okay. All right, I get it. Go on. Yeah, I just want to get you know take a moment to um, you know to thank all you guys out there in YouTube world um, for sticking with us, for for digging in, for dropping the comments, for sharing with your friends. For it, clicking on the bell and grabbing the notifications, um, you we know, need that. We need to grow. Yeah, we need to grow, man. And and, yep. and and here's the deal: we we don't need to grow, but the artists that we are advocating for, all of those guys need to grow. And we do. We put this program together to give you a little insight, a little a little glimpse onto the amazing stuff that these guys are putting out. That they are tirelessly putting their heart and soul and everything they have into it. So make sure you're supporting independent music. Uh, make sure you're supporting rope dope artists. Uh, you know, 21 Soul, check us out on social media. Subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good fun stuff. Uh, Lewis, cheers to you for, again, allowing me uh, a little corner on this sofa here. <laughs> you're holding it down. I think it's your sofa now, bro. It's our <laughs> sofa, homie. It's our sofa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. It's so important that we connect all the musicians and all the fans. It's not about, I like this one or I don't like this one. Really important to stay committed to the community. Really important for people to get together. Because in between us are a whole bunch of different music services that may or may not care about what you want, right? We've all been out to a great show, connected with musicians directly. You do it on the recorded side, it supports everybody, keeps people together, and moves us forward. Cheers to you, guys. That's my little pitch. Love it. All right. Subscribe, guys.
Let's do it. 